Carl Ferrazzi here. I have a, an exciting video uh, to share, at least exciting to me, um, when it comes to uh, level air and air suspension parts for 58 and 59 Chevys. Um, probably received one of the biggest um, level air uh, shipments I've ever received as far as parts is concerned. Um, I don't find parts very often, at least not like I used to. Um, 10 years ago, I would be able to find them quite often, but um, over the last several years, they've been getting harder and harder to find. Um, but I uh, received a call from a gentleman out in uh, Massachusetts who had collected um, some level air parts for many years, and uh, he was ready to get rid of everything. Uh, called me out of the blue. I wasn't expecting um, to, uh, to hear from this gentleman. And uh, he called with um, quite a bit of uh, uh, parts. And I like to... Uh, to go over everything that um, he shipped out to me. I just received the shipment uh, today. Um, so it's sitting in the back of my truck and uh, I'll show you what arrived. All right, here's the shipment here. It's a pretty big box. It takes up almost the entire length of my bed here. And the biggest piece of the collection is a frame section. From a 58, um, I guess it was a very rusty car and they cut the frame section. Um, so what we have here is the uh, lower control arm or uh, A arm with a canister in there. There are the airlines going into uh, the sensor in the frame. And I have all kinds of boxes. Um, in here full of parts. So as I start unpacking things, I'll film uh, what we have here. Um, here's another section of the frame. It's got a little bit of a tear in it. I knew that that was there when I purchased it, but that's one of the, um, the frame horns uh, for the shocks. And the shocks go all the way down to the A-arm there, onto the little, um, and the shocks go all the way down to the A-arm there, onto the little bracket that's connected to the arm. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rest of the top off and then start going through uh, what else is in this container. Okay, I've took some of the boxes out. There's a total of seven boxes um, with a variation of parts in each of the boxes. I'm gonna start opening up the boxes now and going through um, what's in each of them. Um, there's all different types of stuff that pertains to um, level air system. Uh, some of this stuff is 58, some of it's 59. Most of it's going to be 58. Uh, 59 level air parts are just extremely hard to find. I'm still looking for uh, 59 level air parts all the time. So if you know of anybody or have uh, 59 level air parts, please contact me. I would love to purchase them off of you. Um, that way I can use them in a, a restoration project that I'm currently working on. But what we have here is a level air tank. Um, this is the standard tank that you usually see in a 58. Um, there were three different variations of the tank. And this is the one that came in the rebuild kit. Um, what the difference is on these versus the ones that uh, originally came in the cars uh, were that this section here in the top section where you see those um, like nuts or they look like nuts or end caps um, it was completely round uh, originally when they put them in the cars and what you're seeing here is the tank that came in the rebuild kits along with the wire harness and the horn relay up at the top the um, voltage regulator would connect to this bracket here and that's the uh, the horn relay at the top of that bracket. And then you have the valves coming out of the tank there. This is a 58 Chevy level air tank. I am still in the process of looking for a 59 level air tank. If uh, anybody out there knows of one, I would love to have the opportunity to purchase that off of you. All right, I think that's all that's in that box there. see what's in this box. So 
So these are extremely difficult um, pieces to find. Um, that's what, one of the reasons why I was really excited about this shipment um, for various reasons. This is a bracket that goes on the um, compressor bracket. That's for the, uh, the generator. Um, but what I was really excited about with this shipment are these. These are little uh, fittings that sit on top of the intake manifold for the oil return lines. And these are very, very difficult to find. And I have um, several of them in this shipment. Uh, mostly NOS pieces, as you can see. I think that there's uh, six or seven of them um, in this shipment that the gentleman collected uh, throughout the year. So I've got quite a few of those. And what's also in here is an extremely rare uh, 59 level air suspension alcohol jar bracket. So this was 59 Chevy only. This is the alcohol jar, jar bracket that sits on the uh, driver's side inner fender. And I got some more of the brass fittings. So I think there's six or seven of those in total. Um, every time I find a level air system, these things are always missing. And uh, now I have quite a few. All right, let's see what's in this next box here. I think this is going to be the level air script. This is an original level air script. There's a lot of reproductions out there now. Um, the reproductions are made out of brass, I believe. And then they are chrome plated. The originals are made out of pot metal. And this is actually on uh, an original panel. They cut the panel to get the script off. So you can see all the studs are intact. And that is an original level air script. It is made out of pot metal. Just looks to be in very, very nice shape. Okay, and out of one of the other boxes, we do have a compressor bracket. Um, this is a 283 compressor bracket. <clears throat> it is different than a 348. Um, I'll show you the differences here in a moment when I pull the next one uh, out of the out of one of the boxes. Okay, let's uh, pull some more of the boxes out. Bring them up here. I think what this is is a compressor mounted to. Um, a 348 bracket, but we'll take a look once I get the box open. There. Okay, so this is the uh, 58 compressor mounted to a 58 348 bracket so I'll put the two brackets side by side so you can take a look here at the differences so the one on the right is a 348 and the one on the left is a 283 and this bracket right here that I showed you earlier is a generator bracket and that would mount right here on the compressor bracket to mount the generator now what's really neat about this compressor here it sounds like it does pump, so hopefully it's a, a good good compressor. But the compressor is offset. I don't know if you can see that, how it sits back a little bit. So what's really neat about these, and you can see the uh, how it's offset there. What's really neat about these pulleys is that they use these on air-conditioned cars. So it's an offset pulley to go out to that third row um, pulley system for cars with uh, AC.
All right, let's head over to the next box here. This is a junction block. So this mounts on the frame. That's where all the airline airlines go into um, going to each of the, uh, the wheels. So there's canisters at each of the four wheels and uh, that will route lines out to each of those. And it sits on the uh, driver side of the frame right below where the, the bottom of the tank is. So it sits, it sits like that on the frame. Here's an alcohol jar bracket. So, um, that's the alcohol jar lid and the valve that comes off of it. There's no uh, glass jar here, but I have several glass jars. Um, on a 58, that would mount on the radiator support. On a 59, it would mount on this special bracket here. And that would mount on the inner fender. And the reason for the alcohol jar is you would um, put alcohol into the system. Um, so any condensation that would go into uh, the airlines, um, that alcohol would prevent it from freezing and cracking the airlines. All right, let's see what else is in this box here. Pulleys, some third row pulleys it looks like for the cars with AC. Here's another third row pulley. Some more uh, those brass, another one of those brass fittings there on the oil return line. So these are not air suspension shocks. Um, it says uh, front stabilizer shock for uh, level air car Chevy. Um, but what these are, are they're uh, aftermarket or modified shocks um, because you do need to have special shocks for an air suspension car, especially in the front. And what they did was they made special brackets to mount these shocks at the top and also at the bottom. Um, on the original air suspension shocks, there are studs that go through the top for the uh, frame bracket, and then also for the bottom um, where they mount to the A-arm bracket. Um, so you do have to have special air suspension shocks for the front. The back would take your normal uh, air suspension, or not air suspension, I'm sorry, your normal shocks. The front shocks you would need level air shocks specific to the level air car. Uh, the back shocks you would just use your original uh, shocks. There were no uh, special shocks for level air suspension cars. All right, I got one more box in here. This is a little piston that goes inside of the compressor. They're pretty tiny. Um, that's the shaft that moves that uh, piston. It's a pretty neat little piece. And here's another compressor without the pulley on it. Another 58 compressor. 58 and 59 compressors are different. Uh, 58 compressors mount at the bottom of the, 
the compressor, 59 compressors mount in the front of the compressor. So I just want to walk over, kind of show you uh, where some of these parts go on the car. So they're just the level air script on the back of the Biscayne. Um, they would either go on the deck lid on the Impalas, they would go in this panel here. Um, on the Biscaynes or the Bel Airs, um, they would go on the deck lid. And then on the wagons, they would go at the bottom of the tailgate. So in here, you could see the uh, compressors mounted on the bracket there. That is a 283 bracket, so you could see where it mounts on the engine. Those brass fittings are going to go right there where you see that brass fitting um, plugging the block. So I'm glad I got some of those in because I'm going to use one right there in the block. Here's the tank and the alcohol jar. That's the lid that we are looking at earlier. Here's the tank with the relay on top and the voltage regulator off to the side there. And then right down there, all the way at the bottom of the frame, you can see the junction block with all the airlines going through it to each of the wheels. So I'm gonna open up the rest of the boxes tomorrow and also go over the frame section with the canisters and the A-arms um, so you can see what all that looks like in the daylight. And I'll open up the rest of the boxes and go over um, everything that's in there. I look forward to, uh, to finishing up the video. All right, now I'm able to um, get a much better video because um, it's the next day. It's much lighter outside now um, than yesterday uh, when it was starting to get dark when I was opening the packages. But this is a front frame section out of a 58 um, Chevy that had a level air suspension. Uh, one of the big differences on a level air frame is the shock tower mounts here. Um, these are welded onto the frame uh, just right before the, uh, the A-arm there. And the reason for the shock towers is um, because of the canister um, that holds the bag. You can see it right down in there. Also has the leveling valve going into the canister itself. Um, you can't put a shock in there like you normally would with a spring suspension. So they welded shock mounts to um, to the top of the frame here. And then there was a mount on the A-arm itself. You could see right there, a um, little mount that was welded on where the shock attaches to. So the shocks actually sit outside of the A-arms on an air suspension car. And the bottom A-arm um, has a little cone on it. It's hard to see. Um, but I'll show a different, uh, after I'm done videoing this, I'll uh, pull some A-arms out um, and some canisters. That way you can see how it looks inside the frame section there. And then you have the, um, uh, the sensor um, that has the little wheel on it um, to let the, the canister know if it needs to add additional air or take air out. And that's what that looks like um, with the airlines going into it. And the canister sits up inside the frame there that holds the bag and it sits on top of the a-arm and there's a cone in there just really hard to see with it all intact on the frame but as you can see on this side same thing you see the airlines going into the sensor there and all the airlines coming across the frame the airlines were cut but there's the junction block there and the junction block mounts on the frame where these two holes are at right there. Um, so it would screw into there and it would supply all of the airlines out to each of the wheels. Here's the other shock mount here on that side. And then there's the, the sensor there on the driver's side and the canister is uh, up inside the frame section. What's great about having this frame rail here is that um, I'm able to take all of the little clips and everything off of here that hold all these airlines going across the frame. So you see these little clips and the clutch head screws and there's special clips there holding all the airlines. So I'll be able to take all of those off and have them replated. 
Now the canisters are mounted right here with these two um, nuts on both sides of the frame. That's the only thing that holds those canisters in place. All right, so I'm gonna head back out to the garage and I'll give you an idea of what those A-arms look like with the cones on them and how the canisters sit on top of the A-arms in this frame section. All right, so this is what that A-arm looks like. Um, so you can see the cone on top of it. Um, and here's a little bracket I showed you earlier um, where the shock mounts to. And here's one of the canisters. This is a, actually a rear canister, but it's one of the few canisters I still have a, a bag on. Um, so it sits on the cone just like that. And this is what's called the bellow. And the bellow rides on that, on that cone. And then the air goes in and out. Uh, this one doesn't have a sensor on the side of it. Um, the rear passenger side um, is the only canister that does not have a sensor that goes into it. And this is, again, one of the very few bags that I don't have in a car um, that I still have on a canister. So I'm using it in this example. But that's what it looks like um, while it's mounted in the car there. And I had mentioned in the video when I was unpacking everything, um, there is a difference between the compressors and the pulleys. And I pulled out um, another compressor, and this is a non-AC pulley. So you can see it's pretty flush how it mounts, and it's not offset. And this is an AC pulley, where the pulley itself is offset. So you can see how it's offset a little bit there. The reason why they did that is because with... Uh, cars with AC, they had to use a third row pulley um, pulley system on the water pump and the crankshaft. So they had to offset the pulley that was on the level air compressors um, to use that third row pulley system. So again, non-AC pulley and AC level air pulley. And this is a 348 compressor bracket here. And this is a 283 level air compressor bracket. So you could see the differences in the two. Well, I'll continue to upload videos on the level air um, suspension along with other um, videos of 58, 59 uh, Chevys and accessories. So please, if you haven't done so, subscribe to my channel. I will continue to um, load many more videos about uh, cars and parts and accessories. And if there's something that you'd like me to uh, make a video of, please go ahead and comment below. Um, and I'd be happy to try to put together a video um, of something that I haven't done yet. I'm always looking for level air parts. If you have any parts for sale, um, please contact me. Here's my email address. And I'd be happy to uh, add any parts to my collection as I continue to build and work on uh, cars with the uh, level air suspension. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching another one of my videos on the level air suspension.